Hey, good morning, Forward Church. Why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet? We're going to worship our awesome God this morning. He is the Lion of Judah. He fights our battles. And he is the Lamb slain before the beginning of time to take away the sins of the world. Amen. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. So open up the gates. So open up the gates. Make way before the king of to say is here to set the captives free for who can stop the Lord Almighty our God is the lion the lion of Judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles every knee will bow before him our God is the lamb for the sin of the world, his blood breaks his chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? And who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord? God good church amen never leaves anyone behind before I spoke a word you were singing over me and you have been so so good to me for your life in me 
You have been so, so kind to me. Still you give yourself away And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God your foe, still your love fought for me, and you have been so, so good to me, yes you have, when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me, yes you did, you have been so, so working in this place. 
working in this place I worship you I worship you You are way maker, miracle worker Promise keeper, light in the darkness My God, that is who you are Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. You turn it. Who you 
go ahead and give him a shout of praise. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Please join with me as we pray. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are, our great and awesome God, a God of love, a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of faithfulness, a God of truth. And in the midst of the darkness around us, we come to you, the light. In the midst of the hate that engulfs our world, we come to you, the Father of love. And we worship you this morning. What else can we do? For you are our God. You are our all in all. You are our everything. There is nothing that is impossible to our great God. And so we worship you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And we come to you as your children called by your name. We are your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it because Christ has already won the victory. And so may we live into that victory which is in our Lord Jesus Christ. And may we come with confidence, may we come with our burdens, and may we lay them at your feet in full trust and faith like a child, know that you, knowing that you care about the seemingly most minute detail of our life, and you care about the monumental, impossible details of our world that seem so far beyond our imagination. But nothing is impossible with you, for as we look at the night sky, we see the myriads and myriads of galaxies and stars that proclaim your greatness, your awesome name. And we know that the God who set the heavens in place knit each of us together in our mother's womb, and we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made. And God, you wish to speak to us this morning, so speak to us. Some of us need to hear your encouragement, and may we be lifted up as we are encouraged. And some of us need to hear your correction, your rebuke, for we have trivialized, trivialized what is not important. Lord, we have focused, we have majored on minors, we have made our preferences and opinions our gods, and we need to repent of that. For you have called us to be your church, to call, called us to cover everything in love. You have called us to put others first and to serve others. And so, we're, Lord, where repentance is needed, I pray that you would bring repentance so that there might be unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Oh God, be glorified in our lives and in our worship. And may we leave change today for the better, allowing your spirit to transform us into the greater likeness of your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life, who spilled his blood so that we might be forgiven, may we not forget that. And may that message spill over in our lives, in our families, in our communities, in our world. For our world is broken, Lord. Oh God, our world is broken. And our hearts should be broken as we reflect on Afghanistan and Haiti and Myanmar and Tigray, Ethiopia, and on and on and on, Lord. Break our hearts. And may we come to you knowing that you are the God of creation who cares about all nations, all peoples. And so nothing is impossible for you. So may we pray into these and may we put aside our trivialities that we have placed as our precedents. And Lord, may we bear the burden not just of those around us, but of the nations so that the gospel might be proclaimed in all the earth. For that is your heart. Your heart is global. So God, may you be glorified. And Lord, we thank you for those in our midst, in our church, 
who have served globally and serve globally. Lord, we think of Mike and Diane Fiji and their family. We thank you for their work through More Network. And God, I just pray that you would continue to minister through them as they minister to missionaries and missionary families, missionary kids, as they seek to bring healing and hope to some who have become disillusioned, but as they strive to speak encouragement to those who need to be lifted up, God. I pray for wisdom, wisdom for the Moore team as they seek new national team leaders. I pray for Mike and Diane as they uh, seek to provide best for the needs of the member care personnel across Canada. Thank you for their family. Thank you for the marriage of Naomi and Zach, for the way that you have blessed them in so many ways. May you continue to use them. And God, thank you for the privilege of, of opening your word. And as it's opened this morning through Pastor Kirk and in Kitchener through Pastor Daryl, and as we reflect upon the topic of speaking to us, Lord, may we hear your voice. And may we not harden our hearts, Lord, but may our hearts be open to you. And so speak through your servants, speak through your word for the glory and honor and the building up of your church, for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey everyone, Josh here. It's great to be gathered with you in person and online. If you're new here, we're so glad you've chosen to spend your Sunday morning with us. If you're already part of the Ford family, it's good to see you too. Each week, we come together through our services, events, and ministries to love God, love others, and serve the world. Let's see what's happening this week at Forward. We're planning to celebrate Labor Day big this year, and we would love for you to join us and invite your friends and family as well. On Monday, September 6th, we're hosting a party on the backfield from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. with bouncy castles, carnival games, and a free barbecue. You might even have a chance to dunk your pastors, including this guy, and ministry leaders in the dunk tank. Please plan to join us if you're able to help serve, even if it's just for a short portion of it. Please connect with us by texting the word PARTY or scan the QR code below to let us know. Hey Ford, we're in need of several volunteers to come and help paint our Cambridge site and to create a fresh space for Oak Bridge Academy and the rest of our church family. We're hoping to get this done before the fall when all of our terrific programs kick off. Supplies will be provided and if you have time between August 15th and the 28th, we would truly appreciate it. If you're able to help, please scan the QR code below for more information. Hey adults, prayer is a great way to love God, love others and serve the world and is a powerful tool in our everyday walk. We need some men and women who want to expand their prayer life to join our prayer ministry and walk with us as we expand God's kingdom. It's a great way to grow your own faith and walk alongside us as well. If you're interested in this opportunity, scan the QR code below and join the team. And that's what's happening this week. You can find all our announcements and events on our website at forwardchurch.ca. Stay connected with us throughout the week by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Now let's prepare our hearts for today's message and have a great morning. Well, good morning, Forward. How are you doing today? We're good? All right. Uh, this week was the end of our summer camps. We had almost 400 kids attend camp at some point during this summer, and about 40% of them came from families who've never been connected with the local church before. Praise God. What a great summer. If you were, yeah, let's go ahead. If you were involved in camps at all, you volunteered, you were on staff, or you, whatever, if you were involved with camps at all, I want to ask you to stand. I don't know who, if we have anybody in the room, but come on, they're all too tired and still in bed. All right, we got one. All right, let's express our appreciation to our camp staff. Thank you so much. We appreciate everyone who served this summer in camps, and I've heard great stories of what God's done during that time. Take your Bibles, open up to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 
1 Samuel chapter 3, we're going to continue our series, Dangerous Prayers, and I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone, and, and, and that person has said to you, you're not listening to me, are you? Who's going to be honest enough to say, someone has actually said that to me before? Every married man in this place, better raise your hand. All right? I, my wife, would, of course, would never say that to me, because I'm always paying attention to her, but... But the reality is we've all experienced that. I heard a story one time about a, a guy whose wife had said that to him. Uh, and she said, you're not listening to me, are you? And he thought to himself, well, that's a fascinating way to start a conversation. He had missed everything that she had just said. See, this is exactly what prayer can be like for us. You can pray and you can ask God for all kinds of things. And you should pray and ask God for all kinds of things. You can talk to God and you can be honest with God about what you're feeling and experiencing and going through life. And you should talk to God about those things. You can bring every worry, every fear, every anxiety you have and you can surrender it to God because he cares for you. And you should do all of those things in prayer. But when was the last time that you ask God to speak to you? When was the last time you asked God to speak to you? Let me put it another way. What is your ratio of asking God for things compared to asking God to say whatever it is he wants to say to you? That's the prayer we're going to look at this week in 1 Samuel chapter 3. And we just start reading verse 10 because this is the prayer itself, and then we'll backtrack to earlier in the chapter. It says, And the Lord came and stood calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Now, if you've been around church or the Christian community for any length of time, at some point you have heard someone say, the Lord told me, or God told me this, and then they'll fill in the blank with whatever it is God seems to have told them to do. And let me just say this. If you're ever going to use the phrase, God told me, please make sure it's true. Please make sure that what you're saying is actually really what God has told you. I, 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 I've had several different occasions where people have come up to me and said, Kirk, you said this and this and this and this. And I look at them and I'm like, you must have been talking to a different Kirk because I didn't say those things. And, and how annoying is it to you when someone puts words in your mouth? Right? Now imagine what it's like to be God when we put words in his mouth. And we say God said this, but he didn't actually say it. So if you're going to use that phrase, the Lord told me, please make sure that it's actually what God said. But, but I also want to say this, at the same time, do not underestimate the reality that God wants to speak to you. And to you, and to you, and to you. God wants to speak to you. Some of you are thinking right now, me? And I just want to say, yes, you. The God of the universe, who is perfect and holy in every way, as Pastor Kevin just prayed, that God wants to speak to you. The truth is that God speaks to who he wants, when he wants, how he wants. Let's go back earlier in this story in 1 Samuel chapter 3. It starts off in verse 1 by saying, Now the young man Samuel, let me just stop right there. It is not only the most obvious people who God wants to speak to. Most people think, well, if you reach a certain age or if you have a certain level of spiritual maturity, that's the person that God wants to speak to. But that's not the reality. Your age has nothing to do with whether or not God wants to speak to you. In this story, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, it says the young man Samuel, Josephus, who's a historian, he would say that, that Samuel was about 12 years old when this story was taking place. God wants to speak to you no matter what your age is. 
And those of us who have been older and been around Christianity for any length of time, we need to actually understand that we don't have the corner on God speaking to us, that God can speak to our kids just as much as he can speak to us adults. That age is not the issue. He can speak to kids just as much as he can speak to us. But it's not just an age issue, it's also not a spiritual experience issue. Your lack of spiritual experience has nothing to do with whether or not God wants to speak to you. Some of you in this room or watching the service online right now, you are in a place where you're going, like, I've never been to church before, or if I've been, I've been a few times, and I'm not really sure about this God thing, this story. I feel uncomfortable with some of this stuff. I have all kinds of questions, and I just want to say to you that even if you have no spiritual experience, I believe the God of the universe wants to speak to you. Samuel, in this story, he was an inexperienced young man. He had never had God speak to him before. The Bible tells us that. But it didn't change the reality that God wanted to speak to him. No matter what your spiritual experience is in the past, I believe God wants to speak to you. And how do I know that? If you're taking notes, write down three different Bible references. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 says this. In these last days... He has spoken or is speaking, present tense, to us by his son. That God speaks to us through Jesus. That the life of Jesus is meant to be God's voice into the world to speak to us. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 says, As the Holy Spirit says, that's present tense, as the Holy Spirit is speaking. That the Holy Spirit today, right now, is speaking to people. And then Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, kind of encapsulates this whole series of chapters in the book of Hebrews by saying that the word of God, the Bible, is active, it's alive, it, it, it is there for God to speak to us through his word. That you don't just read the Bible to gain information, you don't read the Bible to go through the motions of saying, I read the Bible, but that the God of the universe wants to speak to you in this moment through his word. It's what the Bible teaches us. Some of you today, you are here and you are hurting and you are tired. And I believe God wants to speak to you. Some some of us, we're here and and to be honest, we're, we're pretty comfortable. Life's pretty good and we're kind of going through the motions of life right now. And I want to say, I believe God wants to speak to you. Some of us, we're, we, we just feel lost and new to this whole thing. God wants to speak to you. Some of you sincerely want to follow Jesus with your life. And God wants to speak to you too. That we understand that the very core of the Christian story is the reality that Jesus came to earth to die on a cross and to rise again from the grave so we can be reconciled to God. So we can have fellowship with God. That we can talk one-on-one, personally, to the God of the universe, and he can talk to us. But here's the reality. You're only going to be able to hear God speak when you're ready to hear what God has to say. Look at verse 1 some more in 1 Samuel chapter 3. It says, The young man Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. The idea that there was no frequent vision at the end of verse 1, when it describes that, it's this idea that God had kind of stepped back from engaging with his people. It was a sign of God's judgment on Israel, that, that he had been trying to communicate, trying to talk to his people, but his people decided they didn't want to listen. And so God just said, okay, I'll step back and let you have what you want to have. a scary place to be. God still wanted to speak to them, but they didn't want to hear it, and so he just pulled back and he stopped. And if you've ever been in a relationship with someone where you're trying to communicate to them, you're trying to talk to them, but they don't seem to want to listen to you, then you have just a glimpse of an idea of what this is like. God's not walking away from relationship with Israel, not at all. 
What he's doing is he's not giving them the depth of relationship with him that they could possibly have had if they would have just listened. And then in the midst of this story of a people who don't want to listen to God comes this 12-year-old young man who steps into the story. And he starts doing things to prepare himself to listen and to hear from God, and he doesn't even realize what he's doing because he's never heard from God before. And I think when we look at this story of Samuel, we're going to get some ideas of how we prepare ourselves to hear from God. The first thing we're going to see from Samuel is this, that you prepare yourself to hear from God by turning your attention towards God. If you've ever had a conversation with someone, so earlier this week, Shannon and I, were, we were talking, we were having a conversation, but we were busy and we're trying to do like three things at one time. And, and so the conversation started, but then we're running around the house in different directions. And as we went opposite directions from each other, it became more difficult for us to hear each other. And so we found ourselves at times going, like, what did you just say? Or did you hear what I just said? Because we were actually facing the opposite direction and walking away from each other. If you've ever had that kind of experience before, then you get a glimpse of what's needed to be able to hear what someone has to say. In verse 1, it tells us that Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. This is how Samuel is turning his attention towards God, is by ministering to God. Now, that might sound weird to you. How in the world does a human minister to God? Isn't ministry something you just do for people who are in need? Does that mean that God has a need that only could be met by a human? But that's not what ministry is. At its core, ministry is about serving someone. And for Samuel, who was learning to become a priest, he was hanging out with the Levites and learning what, what priest life was like, it would have meant everything from spending time praising and worshiping God to just normal, practical little tasks like cleaning up the house of the Lord. Like we don't often think about this when we read passages in the Bible, but, we, but, but the reality is that Levites were given like little practical duties like who's going to remove the ash from all the burnt offerings? Who's going to set up all the materials so that the sacrifices could be made? And that's what it meant for them to minister to God. They served God. And sometimes when we come together like this as a church family, we come together and we sing songs. And sometimes we just go through the motions of, well, we're singing songs because this is what we're supposed to do is sing songs at church on Sunday. But when you come in and you spend time worshiping and praising God and engaging with your heart and focusing on him, you're ministering to God. You're serving him through your worship. When, when you hear us talk about the need for people to serve in different areas of our church, I hope you hear this that none of the things we talk about for people to serve in, none of those things are ultimately about the organization of Forward Church. All of those things are ultimately about God's people serving God. That's what it's all about. They are all designed to take our attention off of ourselves and to focus our attention on serving Him. We don't volunteer around here. We serve in all kinds of places and ways. Every person who wants to hear God's voice needs to turn their attention towards God and serve him. We serve in all kinds of places and ways. I think about our hospitality teams who every single Sunday are here welcoming people, creating a safe place for you to be able to gather every single Sunday. People who are behind the scenes who you never see, never pay attention to, but they are serving God. Our, our production team that runs all of our audio and video that have made our online services possible throughout COVID, they are all serving God. People who have been cleaning up and painting around this building, 
People who have been getting ready for ministries in the fall, all of them doing things sacrificially because they are ministering to God. They are serving God with the talents that God has given to them. And, and, and friends, listen, every person who is a part of this church, if you want to hear God's voice, you need to turn your attention towards God, and part of that means you need to find your place to serve God. There should be no consumers in the body of Christ. We live for an audience of one, and his name is Jesus. Every person in this room, every person watching online, God has gifted you, and you are in a place where you can give away of yourself to other people. If you want to turn your attention towards God, you need to think about how you're serving, how you're worshiping him as part of the church. The second thing is you prepare yourself to hear by having a posture of actually wanting to hear. Look at verses 4 to 10 and pay attention to how many times Samuel has a posture of wanting to hear. He says, then the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived the Lord was calling the young man. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant Hears. Even though Samuel didn't know it was God speaking to him, he had this posture of wanting to hear whoever was trying to talk to him. On multiple occasions, he's saying, here I am. And then in his final prayer, Samuel says, your servant is listening. Telling someone that you're going to listen to them is not the same thing as listening to them. No matter how many times I tell my wife, I want to hear how your day went, it does not mean that I'm actually listening to how her day went. Not one amen from a guy in the room? Come on. <laughs> Social science researchers have demonstrated what they call the closeness communication bias. Closeness communication bias. This bias exists when we believe that we know what someone is saying simply because we think we know them well already. So we get close to some, getting close to someone appears to create this illusion of understanding the person more than actually understanding them. We actually, as people, tend to listen more precisely when talking to a stranger than we do talking to people that we say we're close to. And the reason is, to truly understand someone often requires a second thought to think, wait a minute, is this really what this person is talking about? Is this really what they meant? And we tend to not ask ourselves that second question when it comes to people that we're close to because we assume we already know what they meant. And friends, I see this happen all the time for myself and many others who have been believers in Jesus for any length of time. We think we know what God wants to say because we've been around it so long. We've heard all the Bible stories, we've listened to all the sermons, we've listened to all the podcasts that are out there, and, and, and we think we already know it all. But then we miss out on what God is wanting to say to us right now. It is possible for you and I to go through all the motions of being a Christian and never have the posture of actually wanting to hear from God. 
You can come to church. You can serve somewhere. You can do Bible studies until you no longer have a pulse. But that does not mean you want to hear from God. Do you have the posture of eagerly desiring to hear from God? The third thing we can learn from Samuel is that you prepare yourself to hear by identifying false voices and distractions in your life. Throughout this whole story, Samuel thinks it's Eli's voice that is calling him, but it wasn't. And there are going to be all kinds of voices trying to get your attention. There are going to be all kinds of people trying to tell you what you should and should not do with your life. Marketing companies exist to create stories to try to tell you what you should and shouldn't do with your time and your money. And then there's not just the voices that are out there, but there are the voices that are up here in our own heads that are trying to tell us different stories about ourselves, the messages we believe about who we are, who we aren't, our worth, our value as people. You will always have all kinds of people, voices, trying to get into your thinking. Jesus tells us that his sheep know his voice. Not all the voices that are coming at you are coming to you from God. And one of the prayers that I have found myself praying often is, God, Help me to hear your voice above every other voice that's out there. And there's voices, and then there's the distractions that we have in life. There's a Harvard study that says, as people, we spend 47% of every hour distracted from being fully present. And for those of you who are just distracted, we spend 47% of every hour distracted from being fully present. We think we're always present. We think we're above distractions, but we aren't. We wake up in the day and we get on with our daily routines, whatever they are. You wake up in the morning, get yourself ready, you go to work, go to school, whatever it is you're going to do. You, you come home, you eat supper, you're exhausted and you just kind of plop yourself into bed at the end of the day, and you hit repeat the next day. And that daily grind, that in itself can become a distraction in our life away from hearing the voice of God. Because we convince ourselves, I don't have time to hear from God. I got too many other things on the go. I want you to know that God cares about your day-to-day -day life. He cares about every moment of every day in your life. And I believe he wants to speak to you in those moments. Notice in this story, God came and spoke to Samuel, not when he was worshiping, not when he was busy serving in the tabernacle, but God comes to Samuel in the silence of the night. When there are no other distractions around. And if you're going to hear God's voice, you may need to identify some of the distractions in your life that you're going to put away so that you can hear from him. I don't know what those distractions are, but you do. You know what they are for your life. Now, of course, all this still leaves us with the question of how do I actually know God is speaking to me? How do I know that that's really God and that I didn't just have bad pizza last night? So Samuel gives us two tests that we can use in our life. The first test is that you need to compare to what God's word already says. Look at verse 11 of this chapter. It says, The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. 
Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. God doesn't tell Samuel anything new. God actually says to Samuel, here's what I want to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I've already said. There's coming a point where Eli's family, Eli's power is coming to an end. And that's how God operates. When God speaks to you, he will never go against what his word has already says. He will always confirm what his word has already said to us. So if you think God has said this to me, you need to be able to look in the Bible and say, does this line up with what the Bible teaches? I've had people say to me, Pastor Kirk, I need to pray and see if God wants me to be baptized. I can already tell you how God's going to answer that prayer. Yes. How do I know that? Because he says it in the Bible. The only question is, are you going to listen? Or I've had conversations with people who are struggling in their marriages, and I've, I, I've, had, I've had conversations with guys who have said to me, I, God wants me to be happy. I know God wants me to be happy, and that's why I'm leaving my wife. And so I'm praying because I believe God has given me a word that I'm supposed to leave my wife. And I'm telling you, that was bad pizza, not God. Because that goes against everything that he says in his word. Whatever it is you think God is saying to you, it always has to line up ultimately with the Bible. And then the second test that Samuel gives to us is the confirmation of people who are more spiritually mature than we are. In verse 15 down to verse 18, we see the fallout of what Samuel heard from God. He says, Samuel lay until the morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, and he said, here I am. And Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Samuel goes to Eli, this man he trusted, and tells Eli, God actually said that, like, this is the end for you. And Eli says, yeah, that, that's God. Eli confirms for Samuel that this was God's voice that he heard. And when you think that God has shown you or told you something, it is so important that one of the filters you use is you go to people who are, who are more spiritually mature than you. And you ask them for insight and guidance and just say, is there any chance that this was God or is, this, or is there any chance that I ate bad pizza? And it doesn't mean that they're 100% right all the time, but it's a great filter to have to go to fellow Christians and ask them for that counsel. But asking God to speak to us is really only part of the story, isn't it? The dangerous part is what are you going to do when he does speak? What are you going to do with what he says? You have no idea what God's going to say or where he might take you. See, most of us, when we want God to speak, we go to God and we say, God, I've got this problem. Would you speak to me about this problem? But what if God wanted to speak to you about something completely different than the problem that you went to him with? Most of us, we're not really sure if we want to hear what God has to say. For Samuel, he wakes up and he has all kinds of fear over what God had just said to him. Even though it wasn't going to directly about him, it's more about Eli and his family, Samuel wakes up because this man that he loves and admires and respects is about to go through God's judgment and Samuel is filled with fear in this moment. He didn't even want to talk about it. But friends, here's what I want us to hold on to today. When you listen, when you really listen to what God wants to say to you, 
you can then act because you know that God is with you. There is no second guessing. You don't have to wonder, I wonder if God's on my side with this or not. When God speaks to you, you can act knowing that God is with you. Look at verse 19. It says, Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And let none of his words fall to the ground. God always speaks to you and I for a reason. Sometimes it's because he wants to warn us. Sometimes it's because he wants to comfort us. Sometimes he just wants to tell you what to do. But God always speaks for a reason. I believe today, in this place, there are people who don't yet know Jesus. You have not surrendered your life to following Jesus. And I believe in this place, God wants to get your attention and he wants to say to you, come to me. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to, to call you my child so that you can talk to him and he can talk to you. You can become a part of God's family. I believe that some of you, you're struggling with whatever issue you're struggling with right now. Whether it's marriage or your family or friendships or relationships. Whether it's how your money is going or how your time is going. And I just believe this. Like, it's not like God doesn't care about those things. He deeply cares about you and those things. And he wants to speak to you about those things in your life. Some of you are, you're going through all kinds of anxiety and fears right now in your life. I believe that the God of the universe loves you and cares for you. And he wants to speak to you in the midst of your anxiety and fears. And for others, God wants to speak to you and call you to something bigger than you can possibly imagine. Some of you have a wonderful plan for your life. You have all the dreams laid out of what the next one, three, five, fifteen years are going to look like. But have you asked God to speak to you about your future? For some in this place today, I believe God actually wants to call you to become a full-time missionary somewhere. Some of you who are Whatever age you are, I don't believe this is an age thing. God's going to call you. We talked last week about being bold. God's calling some of you to step up and be bold. There are people in this place that God's calling you into full-time vocational Christian ministry in a local church somewhere or in the mission field somewhere. But you haven't asked him yet. For, to speak into your career path. You see, the easy part is to pray. The dangerous part is to listen. What are you going to do when God speaks to you? Are you ready to listen, church? Just imagine with me for a minute how your relationship with God would be different if you were to ask God to speak to you about whatever he wants to talk about as much as you tell him what you want to talk to him about. Speak, Lord, because your church is listening. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in this place and we recognize today that we are nothing without you. You give us very breath in our lungs. God, I am so grateful for your son Jesus who came to this earth who made the way possible for us to be reconciled to you, who made the way possible for us to call you Father, that we can have relationship with you, that we can talk to you, and we can ask you to talk to us. Father, I pray that your spirit throughout 
these days that are ahead of us, this week that is in front of us, you would help us to think through our own prayer life and how many times we're asking you for things instead of asking and inviting you to speak to us about whatever you want to speak to us about. Help us to be a people who have the posture of coming to you and saying, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's respond, church, by worshiping our King together. Would you stand if you're able, please?
Jesus Christ.